Hi, I'm Dan Schmidt, and this is Team Chicago Challenge. We're in Woodstock, Illinois. We are at the McHenry County Fair. I'm here for Buzz Walnick's first spot meet, 2021. We're getting a little bit beyond the Chinese plague. People are not masked up because actually in sunshine, right, for you people out there, listen, COVID does not exist in sunshine. Sunshine, besides giving you vitamin D, is ultraviolet light. Ultraviolet light kills the Chinese plague, okay? So you don't need to wear a mask if you're in the sunshine. But anyhow, what does this swap meet represent? Pure capitalism. That's the beauty of a swap meet. You got people buying, people want to buy something, you got people selling. What is the price? The price is determined between two people. This is the raw idea of what capitalism really is. So when people tell you how evil capitalism is, they're lying to you. But anyhow, it's great that I'm here. I have a special guest. He's going to be coming by later, Ray Smith, and we got a priceless picture. I'm going to look at some of the people selling out here. I might talk to some of the other people here. And uh, and I think I'm going to do some uh, a couple little political clips. But let's go, uh, let me walk around a little bit and see what this whole place looks like. Yes, Buzz provides a great location for folks to get together to buy and sell motorcycle parts, automobile parts also here. And I should point out that thanks to President Trump and Operation Warp Speed, the vast majority of these folks had the opportunity to get their vaccine so they don't have to walk around with a mask on. Now let's talk to Buzz. Hi, I'm Buzz Walnick. We're here with Woodstock, the first time in a long time that we've been able to have our swap meet uh, in the old area with the buildings. Uh, it's for, open for motorcycles predominantly, and uh, if you have any car parts, they're welcomed. Today turned out to be a very, very good day. The weather it was cold, but uh, no snow, no rain, sun shining and a lot of people attended as a result. Uh, it's a very good one. We we'll look forward to doing a couple more in Woodstock later in the year. We've got three more times to do it. And uh, thanks to all that uh, came and the other ones that hadn't come, please try for the next time. Thanks very much. Thank you, Buzz. As we look at another view, a McHenry County Fair with hundreds of sellers and buyers. I had a chance to talk to my old friend, Ray Smith, and we're gonna talk about this priceless photo. Okay, so I'm with uh, Ray Smith, who's an old motorcycle racing friend of mine who was uh, racing at Santa Fe. Probably the first time I ever went to Santa Fe, you were probably on the racetrack. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And uh, 61, I started racing there. Right. Well, I didn't come out to Santa Fe until 1970. Right. I mean, I, did I ever tell you that story? Uh, tell me again if All I right. don't remember. I would. The guys from A Cycle World asked me, uh, they went every Wednesday night. And they would sit up in the grandstands in the top corner above the beer stand. Correct. So they already said to me, why don't you come race? You know, come, uh, I mean, come, go to the races with it. I had my triumph. Uh -huh. So I rode out there. I thought racing was drag racing. I had no idea of what, you know, motorcycle racing was or could be. Because I went to US, I went to US 30 one time with the guy drag racing a bike. Yeah. And I went to Oswego. All right, I raced both those. Yeah, so great. I w walk in the racetrack. I walk over by the track. Practice is going on, and I stood there and went, man, I want to do this. I thought it was the coolest thing i ever seen in my life. All right. Yeah. So anyhow, we're looking at this picture right now. You know, look at Ray for a second. But we're looking at this picture, and I think this this is a priceless picture. Now, if you look real close on this, you can see these two guys 
Look at them, they're twins. They're on an Indian motorcycle. On the front of the bike, it says Chicago. So they had a sign on, the, on their front fender. Two guys from Chicago rode all the way to Massachusetts to the Indian factory. Correct. Now which one of them two guys is your dad? Uh, this one is my dad. His name was Bruce and his twin brother Lou. Alright, so tell the story about them going to New York. Well the story was that uh, Lou had a girlfriend in New York, so that's why they were going to New York. Thank you. <laughs> and he bought this brand new 1913 Indian which was a thousand cc twin. It was the first Indian with an electric light and a kickstarter. The 1912 model had a carbide light and pedals like a bicycle that started. So it was an updated Indian. So they, did they buy this bike together? Or no, Lou bought it. Lou bought the bike. My, uh, and who had the girlfriend in New York? Lou. Lou did. Right. And the story you told me is they followed railroad tracks. The uh, streets sometimes were so muddy that they had to ride on the railroad tracks. And when they got lost, they would follow telegraph lines or so. And they would stop in gas stations for gas, and they had hardly any money. They would clean, sweep the floor, and, and they would get free tank of gas and a sandwich. <laughs> That's how they made it to New York City. So they would work? Work, we'll work for gas. Right, but they stopped in Springfield to see the factory, right. Indian factory, how much, how much and, how much and when, it, seven. when an Indian factory says, you're from Chicago on our new new bike, so they put shirts on them, it said Indian and hats, and they uh, took a photograph of them. This is the background of the factory, and it was in, uh, on the front page of the Springfield, Massachusetts newspaper talking about these two twins that came from Chicago all the way to Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, my, uh, some relatives had that clipping newspaper, but it's been lost and I haven't seen it since I was very young. Right. Yeah. So is your dad a, a motorcycle guy then, would you say? His brother was the more of the motorcycle guy. Right. Yeah. He did ride bikes a lot and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I got out of grammar school, I wanted to get uh, a whizzer or a Cushman Mm -hmm. And my dad says, no, let's get you a real motorcycle. Oh, really? Yeah. So we found a 1941 knucklehead uh, Harley Davidson in a gas station across from Wrigley Field for $200. Oh, really? And uh, we bought it. It had a crumb fork on it and straight pipes. Really nice look. It had a, a modern front fender on it, but it needed a rear tire. So they said there's a motorcycle shop over on Addison and Halstead Street. It's a Sunbeam dealer. Well, the guy that owned it, his name was Basil. <laughs> so that was one of Basil's for, first uh, shop? Or second shop, maybe. Yeah, I think he, his yeah, first shop but, was on Rockwell. Right, and then... But uh, anyhow, he was Sunbeam dealer, maybe BSA, but uh, that was before he moved over to uh, Western Avenue and got the Honda franchise. But that was my first time of meeting Basil, and he put a brand new tire on the back of uh, this Harley that I that I bought. But, uh, so you know Basil from the beginning also. Yeah, right. Right, and right. I used to race for Basil uh, at Santa Fe Speedway on uh, Ducatis. He had a So he sponsored you? Yeah, he sponsored me on a 250 uh, Ducati. And uh, I was his second rider. His main rider was Jim Woods. Yeah. Who, who also was the... He would ride... Um, WGN. WGN running film back and forth from the Cubs games and the... Sox games and airport. from O'Hare Field. Correct, that's yeah. correct. Yeah. 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 Wow, what yeah. great memories. Right. And Jim Woods had uh, two sons, they were all, he had three sons, but I think two Vale of them, Woods. They got, they got into racing. Right, yeah. Vale and uh, I think it was Jim Jr., wasn't it? Uh, I don't remember all the names. Yeah, but, uh, right. But that was uh, my relationship with Basil for many, many now, years. Now, do you remember Anthony Joseph Anthony August at all the race in Santa Fe at a shop on Kedzie hmm. no don't ring a bell huh no I remember a, a Tony August or yeah something. Tony yeah somehow you got in a sword fight with a burglar in his garage <laughs> is that, is we, I've heard guy? that I've heard that story okay, too okay same guy right. <laughs> Tony it's Joseph oh, Anthony right okay <laughs> see we could the reality of a swap meet like this. Now, 
Buzz Walnick, I mean, I go back with Buzz probably 20, 25 years. Like I said, Ray was racing at Santa Fe what, the first time I went to Santa Fe. Ray was racing a Triumph. I remember he was a well-known TT rider, more so TT than short track. Right? Correct. Yeah, well, I won the novice championship and the amateur championship. At Santa, Santa Fe. Santa Fe, yeah, not the expert. <laughs> no, right, right. Well, that, that Santa Fe Speedway, let me, and Ray will testify to this. The greatest racers, the greatest racers in the country would be at Santa Fe Speedway on a Wednesday night. Every Wednesday night was almost like going to the National. And then at the National, where they would qualify maybe 40 riders, or the one time I rode a National, they qualified 60 riders. And they ran six heat races of 10 laps. And each one of them heat races were as extreme as the national. I mean, one thing I say about Santa Fe Speedway, and you know what I'm talking about, how tense it was. I mean, we're talking 14 second laps. If you allowed a thought to go through your mind, three bikes just passed it. Correct? Right, oh yeah. I mean, you had to be on the gas and off the gas for a split second and he had to get right back on the gas. I mean, you, it, 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 correct? Is that right. how? Yeah, and we were not allowed to have brakes in those days. That's no right. No brakes That's right. back. And it was Neil King that finally allowed, got the AMA to allow Drew Yamaha and a little bit of a payoff that they allowed compression releases. Right. Yeah. And that made the two strokes competitive with the four strokes. But even talking about national championship races. Now, I didn't see Dick Manton. So I know the first year I went to Santa Fe was 1970. Because yeah. Robert E. Lee won the national on the Dick Mann replica OSA in 70. Yeah. Then you would think two strokes dominated everything. The next year in 72, didn't Bart Markle come back and win it on a Harley yeah, sprint? the sprints. Right? Yeah. yeah. So the four strokes, we're still competitive, even into, you know, 72, 73, and then, and then basically the two strokes dominated. Then you had the, then you had the, the Botaco revolution with the Astros, and then they lowered the age. That's the other thing we should point out. Up until 74, maybe, you had to be 18 to get a license. And then they reduced it down to 16. And then you get Steve Elo show up, then you had Garth Brow show up, and then you had Springsteen. I mean, these young kids came along yeah, right. and just like pushed us out. <laughs> yeah, those young kids were racing since they were five years old. Right, right, right. <laughs> Unbelievable. Right? No, I, well, mean, I can remember Barry Briggs, who was England's speedway champion, came to Santa Fe and tried to race his speedway bike, but it wouldn't work on the Blue well, groove. It had to go up in the loose stuff, but the, and they made a special race of Dick Mann and Bart Markle and Barry Briggs to race during the national. Right. And, and but one thing we should point out: a speedway bike generally is a four-stroke, 500cc bike. He put together a twin cylinder. Was it a twin Yamaha? I don't remember the name. Yeah, I think he had a twin Yamaha, and he put that together to come to Santa Fe. But Santa Fe was a hard groove track, and he was trying to ride the cushion. So even though he ran, rode the wheels off that bike, he, he couldn't beat the, the standard short no, track bike. Right. right. But there was a, a special race of the Bart Markle, Dick Mann, and uh, Barry Briggs at the National. Right. It's going to be a three or four lap thing. And the question of who won that race? Well, actually, after one or two laps, I think Dick Mann and Bart Markles, both motors went bad, and they stopped the race, and there was no finish to the race. Oh, <laughs> there, right, right. There was no outcome of whoever won that race. Right, 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 right. So I'm happy you brought this by. Uh, my I, pleasure. I mean, this is a bit of history. A picture like this, like I said, this, this is as pr and, and 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 I look at them. They are identical twins. Yeah, they were. I mean, maybe the only difference between them, they might have had a birthmark in a different location. <laughs> you look at the button shoes that they wore. Wow. They had some kind of button on the little booties. Right. And, and then these leggings were leather. Oh, yeah. Things, some 
that have a big suitcase on the back to carry their clothes. You imagine those two guys sitting on that bike together with a suitcase behind them? Wow. It's like a, a Schwinn bicycle with a thousand cc motor. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Thank you, Ray, for that wonderful story and priceless photo as we see the hundreds of folks finding parts that they need for their motorcycles and their automobiles. Isn't it wonderful? Capitalism, freedom. All right, you got to see some of the people selling out here. What a great group of people just having a good time. A nice, beautiful day, April. No rain. Well, let's talk about, you know, if, if you're one of my audience, if you're in my audience and you voted for President Biden, or I call him President Bite Me. Now, that was a term that was given to him. Hold on. Is this Donald Trump? Hold on. President Trump. No, I'm, uh, listen, I'm, I'm on camera right now. I can't really talk to him. But we'll get together sometime in the future. We've got a plan what we're going to do to get rid of this goofy President Bite Me. And, um, and uh, I'm doing my TV show right now. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you later. I'll try to call you back later on. Give me about 10 minutes. Thanks for uh, checking in with me. Okay, so if you voted for Biden and you're a motorcyclist, let me give you a couple. Why do they want electric cars? Right? They want, now they're pushing no gasoline engine cars after 19, after 2030 or 2035 to control you. There is not enough electricity. There's not going to be some magic electricity to come about in the next 10 or 15 years to replace, to power all the solar cars, to power all the industry, to power all the homes. They want to take control. That's why they're going after the Second Amendment. That's why they hate motorcycles. After they take your guns, they're going after your motorcycles. I mean, maybe you people seem to forget I don't forget, it was the Democrats wanted to restrict motorcycles, wanted the helmet laws. The motorcycle represents freedom. The gasoline powered Amer American car represents freedom. These people, your Biden, your Harris, uh, Pelosi, Schumer, goofy Pritzner here in Illinois, they want control. They want to get you by the short hairs. And that's why you cannot be voting for these morons. We got this babbling idiot who's the president, who's listening, who's the voice behind, who's the man behind the curtain that's running this. This has serious times. So if you're watching this show, if you voted for him, you should be ashamed of yourself, but we can never, ever, ever let this happen again. So I'm going to look around a little bit more. I might even show you a clip of some uh, racing action. I'm going to fill this show with good information, fun information. And uh, it's beautiful to be out here in Woodstock at Walnut Swap Meet, the first one for 2021. Now let's take a look at some short track action from Santa Fe Speedway. That is me on the outside. Battling for second place. The bike on the inside has a little bit of a bobble here. I take advantage of that. And now I am running in second place. Short track action. Now this is only a B program. I never made the A program at Santa Fe Speedway. And I gotta thank my good friend, Jesse Hernandez. He found this film that we could use to shoot at night and he videotaped or he filmed this footage. And I mentioned drag racing. Well, a good friend of mine from Kenosha, T.C. Christensen, was maybe one of the greatest motorcycle drag racers ever back in that era. So let's look at some priceless video footage from Wide World of Sports, T.C. Christensen, setting the world record. 
Now right, we're going to go into the motorcycle finals while we wait for Grumpy Jenkins and his final run in pro stock competition against Bob Glidden. Larry Welch, as you saw from the graphic, indicating the progression from the semifinals into the finals. Larry Welch of Landover Hills, Maryland, against T.C. Christensen of Kenosha, Wisconsin. Now this is Welch right here, and he'll be running in the near lane. Christensen on a double Norton will be over in the far lane. Welch is on a triumph. About three thousand dollars on the line right here. Great start for Christensen, and he runs away with it. T.C. Christensen of Kenosha, Wisconsin. On his twin Norton-powered bike, goes whistling down and wins easily. He got a big jump on Larry Welch at the start and was never in trouble. The undercarriage scraping along as darkness settles in here. There is no fire, but it's a big win for T.C. Christensen, some $3,000. And now a clip of T.C. Christensen taking his twin engine Norton down a runway to the British bike owners, his friends from Wisconsin. T.C. Christensen was the king of drag racing back in that era, and I will be doing some shows with him later this year. And as we see TC taking off his helmet as he comes back to the line, we're gonna go to two comments. One from Jan Gabriel, who was the announcer at Santa Fe Speedway, the late great Jan Gabriel, and Neil King, the track champion. So I got to meet this wonderful cast of characters, and as I'm learning all about these guys, I'm also beginning to understand the amount of heart, effort, time, energy spent on motorcycle racing. And probably at Santa Fe, as far as I'm concerned, the heart of motorcycle racing was Neil Keene. So everybody played a role. Everybody was a different personality, brought a, brought a little something different to the races at Santa Fe Speedway. And there will never ever be anything like those on Wednesday nights at Santa Fe. You'll never see that again anywhere at any time. So if you have a little piece of that somehow, a photograph, a piece of film footage, a poster, anything, treasure it, because they were, in fact, very extraordinary times. Okay, well let's go back to uh, the days at Ascot. Uh, did you like running the single better than the twin? Like you said, when you went to the 750 rule, you went to the twin. What, were, what was the better bike in your estimation? Well, um, I always liked the singles because that's what I grew up with. Um, racing bikes, with, with a, we need to just discount the modern road racing bike because they're a type of automobile and they they drive like an automobile, you ride them like that, but a single track, dirt track racer, a major part of the way it handles is number one, the gyroscopic effect of the wheels, and the gyroscopic stability you get from the crankshaft. The V-twins have a very narrow axis and a very narrow inertial signature, so do the singles, and so do the triumphs and BSAs, which have a very large central flywheel, but the inertial signature of it has a very stabilizing effect on the way it handles. Um, the most difficult form of racing in the world is motorcycles, single track vehicles, because they do not have a normal attitude, as the uh, aircraft guys say. You, the thing can't stand up by itself. And next to a helicopter, they're the most difficult thing there is to control. <clears throat> My two late great friends, Jan Gabriel and Neil King. And now we're looking at some TT racing at Santa Fe Speedway. I got a good start, but one bike got by me in the first corner. Over the jump, 
and a couple other 500cc single cylinder bikes sneak on by. This was the era where the 500cc bikes were making almost as much horsepower as the Triumph Twin. But I always had a great time racing at Santa Fe Speedway. Sometimes I did great, sometimes I did not do so great. But the memories will always be there. TT racing at Santa Fe Speedway. And now we get to look at the rest of Walnut Swap Meets in Illinois. It's going to Pecatonica, Morris, Illinois, and at the end of the year, Princeton, Illinois. Three more events at Woodstock, all at the fairgrounds. Grundy County Fair, Vero County Fair, Winnebago, and McHenry. For more information, remember to go to wallnextswap.com. Wallnextswap.com to get the latest information on all the swap meets that Buzz and Pixie put on and will be putting on during 2021. To contact me, it's teamdan45 at gmail.com. I love to hear from my audience. Send me an email. Let me know what you think of these TV clips that I am putting up on YouTube. And remember, you can always search on YouTube with Dan Schmidt Motorcycle Racing for great motorcycle racing action. And I highly encourage you to visit the World of Motorcycle Museum. It's in Winnemac, Indiana, four miles south of North Judson, right off of Indiana 39. Give them a call first at 574 896 3172. It's a great trip and it's a great collection of motorcycles. <music>